Hello, and welcome to the third week of Turnaround Take Off, our journey through Lent. And if you're joining us for the first time, just jump in. This week's Bible passage begins with an encounter. In the heat of the day, Jesus meets a Samaritan woman at the village well and asks for a drink. In so doing, he breaks down all kinds of social norms. Jews don't talk to Samaritans. Men don't talk to women. Rabbis don't talk alone in a public space with a woman who's had five husbands and is now living with number six without the blessing of marriage. I wonder, was she just unlucky or is something more being suggested? It's just not done, except that Jesus does it. And thus challenges us to go and do likewise. It's a lived out parable of inclusiveness and radical hospitality. And it comes as a gift, speaking to those times when we ourselves have felt shunned and on the outside, unworthy, when we have yearned for a word of acceptance, respect, welcome. This story goes to the heart of what it means to be in Christian community the inclusive, intercultural, radically hospitable congregation where we give and receive an absolute welcome. As the Apostle Paul says, there is no longer Jew or Greek or Samaritan. There is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male and female, for all of you are one in Christ Jesus. The floating question, though, is that your experience in the church? We have here another story about a seeker, not quite like Nicodemus from last week, since the woman doesn't start with any expectation that her encounter with Jesus might be life-changing. But Jesus turns an ordinary encounter into a moment of searching. He recognizes, I think, the unexpressed hurt, the thirst, so to speak, and tries to engage her and us in conversation. He asks her for a drink, and gets a question in response. How is it that you, a Jew, ask a drink of me, a woman of Samaria? Watch how this intelligent, on-the-edge woman keeps asking questions. Questions can take us into the presence of the holy. We just have to figure out the right ones to ask, though I suspect that God, that Jesus, will use any opening to get to the heart of the matter, to our hearts. Once again, what Jesus seems to be offering is the gift of transformation, not through the spirit wind this time, but through living water. Living water, it's a powerful metaphor, no? I hear echoes from the book of Psalms, Psalm 22. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? My mouth is dried up like a pot shard, and my tongue sticks to my jaws. Or Psalm 42. As a deer longs for flowing streams, so my soul longs for you, O God. My soul thirsts for the living God. We all have these desert moments when we are desperate for a spring in the middle of the wilderness, water to green our withering spirits. You know what I'm talking about. But can you imagine what it would feel like to simply say, yes, give me a drink to accept the gift of living water, of grace, of spirit power. The offer is there. If you only knew the generosity of God, says Jesus, you would ask and you would receive. Is it really that simple? Ours for the asking? Well, it looks that way. Jesus offers speaking for God and we are invited to open ourselves, saying, yes, give me this water. And I wonder, has that ever happened for you? The ability to ask and to say yes comes not only because of the woman's thirst, her desperation, her marginalization, but also because of the acceptance she has already received from Jesus, the affirmation of her basic humanity. When Jesus asked the Samaritan woman for a drink of water, he was sweeping away all the barriers and put-downs that we humans continue to establish. Who's up? Down in, out, worthy, not. It's almost as if he were saying, I see you, I know you. This becomes even more apparent when the question of how many husbands the woman has had comes into the discussion. He knows who she is, what she has done and not done, and that's okay. 
the offer still stands as it does for you and me no matter what. It's a long passage, this, and you could stop right here, but there's another round of conversation worth touching on where Jesus and the Samaritan woman talk about worship, in particular whether at the temple on Mount Gerizim for Samaritans or the one at Jerusalem for Jews. Sounds a little bit like modern-day denominational squabbles and point scoring, which Jesus cuts right through. Now, sometimes I find that John can almost overwhelm me with his theological circles, so I occasionally find the biblical translation come paraphrase offered by Eugene Peterson in The Message, I find it to be really helpful. Just listen to his take on verses 23 and 24. This is how he translates it. It's who you are and the way you live that count before God. Your worship must engage your spirit in the pursuit of truth. That's the kind of people the Father is out looking for, those who are simply and honestly themselves before Him in their worship. God is sheer being itself, spirit. And those who worship Him must do it out of their being, their spirits, their true selves in adoration. I like that paraphrase. And I find myself wondering what it would be like to worship like that, to find a faith community that worships like that. Now, that would be something. That would pour water all over my parched spirit. One last comment. I'm caught by the way the story ends. This woman at the well becomes an evangelist. Did you catch that? She races back to town, and before anyone can turn his or her back on her, she blurts out some good news about Jesus. David Ewart, a semi-retired minister in Vancouver, has suggested that a good title for the sermon this coming Sunday would be The Other Good Samaritan. I like that.